Good afternoon. Uh, welcome to episode 695. The countdown to 700 continues. Um, the topic today is going to be interesting. <laughs> the title alone is going to be interesting, which is I am no hero, or am I? Uh, what I do and why I do it. And this is in response to something, so I'm going to get into that in a moment. But before I need to get into the topic and break this down, let me choose myself so you know who I am and why I'm doing what I do and why I do these talks, I should say. Um, Hi, my name is Barry Selby, in case you didn't figure that out already. I am a best-selling author, inspirational speaker, and passionate champion for the divine feminine, and help women create balance in love, life, and business, which is why I love doing what I do, and also why I do these talks, because over two years ago, I started doing these talks called Messages from the Masculine, Inspiring a Feminine Heart. And now we're at episode 695. I've got a few of these under my belt. So the topic today, again, is... I am no hero, or am I? And why I do what I do, or who, what I do and why, what I am and why I do what I do. Too many, too many do's and ams and stuff in there. Um, it's two things to start with. First of all, the hero things on my mind anyway, because this is the launch weekend for Endgame, um, which I'll hopefully be seeing either tomorrow night or Monday, because I'm waiting after the rush dies down just a little bit. Yes, I'm a nerd and I love doing, I love the Marvel Universe stuff, so that's on my personal things. That's what you know I am. I'm a fan of, I'm a fan of the Marvel Universe. Secondly, though, somebody I know on Facebook who I consider to be a peer and perhaps a, um, a friend, I don't know yet, we haven't met in person, um, responded to a post I put up. I put up a meme um, yesterday, I think it was, maybe this morning, I, I forget, it was late, late last night this morning, about narcissism and about narcissists and basically it was a meme that I found, I posted it. It wasn't something I came up with, I just posted it. And a lot of people liked it, loved it, commented on it, and really responded to it because it was a negative, to be honest, things about how, how narcissists have no soul and they really are about hurting other people, which I believe that behavior can be very wounding. And it was taken, I, I put it up there in some, a little bit of jest, but also in a bit of honesty because I feel like in some ways narcissists act like they have no soul because they're always taking from other people. And having dealt with a lot of clients, who either dated narcissists or were married to them even, or were parented by people who are narcissists. Because in fact, um, one case, it was a client's mother who was a narcissist. Another case, it was a, a, a client's father who was a narcissist. So it's not always just in the romantic relationship. So that was in the paradigm. But in the response that came down, one of the people I was talking about, she responded saying that somehow I was making out, because um, I did say something about how narcissists can be like monsters. And, and they are, they, they have, they, they have, they are, abusive to other people, which to me is monstrous behavior. I don't appreciate it, I don't respect it, and I don't applaud it by interpreting the imagination. And yes, I use the term monster in that context. And so she came about, she came in my, in the, the feed, she responded to me and said how she thought I was, that I wanted to be the hero to my clients. And I couldn't be further from the truth. Now, I need to be transparent. I have been idolized by certain people who don't get me, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> because I've certainly got my own flaws and own, and own issues. But I want to speak to what I do and why I do it to see why I clearly am not a hero. As I said in my introduction, I'm a passionate champion for the divine feminine, which means I serve women in my work and I respect women in the world, which is not a very common thing by men particularly and by some women, because there are quite a few women don't respect other women, which is unfortunate. So in my work and in everything I do, what I deliver, what I present, what I teach and what I talk about is all in service to that. Because I feel that somebody needs to talk about it and also there are plenty of people who don't talk about it. And I'm not the only one I know for, I know for sure. However, I'm the only one doing it my way. Because I'm the only one with this sort of accent and this sort of presentation and everything else. So it's all private. But the thing is what I teach from, and it's come interesting how it's shifted more recently, I've been talking about relationship and love for a long time. I've got a, a best-selling book about it. Um, and a lot of the work I do has been about the relationship-centric conversation. But what I'm really inviting myself more drawn to, more specifically nowadays, because my work is, keeps evolving, is how to inspire my clients, which is 99% women, to really take care of themselves. Because in my work with relationship work that's been centric, sorry, relationship-centric work with my clients, a lot of times with my clients, what I'm helping them do is heal their wounds to be prepared for a better relationship. What I'm really more and more is my work is healing the wounds. The relationship piece comes automatically in a way. It's really about me helping my clients become 
the most fulfilled and confident part of themselves, healed and whole and comfortable. Healing the wounds from past relationships, from the past abuse, past challenges, past whatever it is, to be free to love again fully. The work is always in, inside. And having been on this journey now for, this just reckon, read that. I was just reviewing what I've been doing for the last, uh, my work I've been on since the mid 80s. I've really been going through a journey of both learning and experiencing and, and, and practicing self-supported pra self -supported practices, making lots of mistakes and learning how to do them right to heal myself and heal my own journey so that I can teach other people how to do the same thing. The latest program I created, which is called Coming Home to Yourself, is really my gift to the world, so to speak, because for a lot of my clients and a lot of people I know, they haven't been wanting to invest large sums of money in this sort of work because it's one of those amorphous things that it's hard to express. So, okay, this, this amount of healing is worth this much money, which is such a, it's like they don't compare, so it doesn't work that way. So what I did with my latest offering, I made it pay what you want because I really get the people who want to invest in it will choose at their own value, and that's nothing to do with me. That's a huge risk, I know. I, I felt it as soon as I did it. <laughs> but I feel there's value in that because then it allows the people who are looking to join the program to choose in for their own worth, their own value, their own choices. But also I'm very passionate about helping women heal their hearts because I've seen so many women wounded, with wounded hearts after being hurt by men. Um, sorry, I was reflecting on something from the past just came forward. Okay. I've been a shoulder women have cried on since I was a kid. That's been part of my way of being. It was never a business thing. It's just what I did as a as a, a comfort, as a safety net. Whether it was a cousin or a friend at school or even at college, it was always that place I created without even realizing it. It was who I am. That place got me in trouble with some other people who didn't like the fact I was such a nice guy. That's a whole other conversation. Um, but it's always been who I am. So in the work I do now, it's really the same thing with a lot more skill, a lot more training, a lot more experience, and a lot more facilitation to help my clients not only feel secure, feel safe, feel comforted, but then feel and learn how to remind themselves to be fully empowered and inspired again. This is not something that I would um, classify as a heroic behavior. <laughs> Just answer that to, to speak to that point because the thing this 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 label of hero actually was, was interesting when my friend when my peer I want to say friends we don't I'm not friends yet or that way to my awareness when she put on the post about how I wanted to be the hero it actually triggered me and I was sitting there going I said why am I triggered I had to sit with it for a moment because that label of hero is not something that I would want to achieve in fact, I don't think anybody would want to achieve it anybody does want to achieve it needs to look at themselves. It's something that may be assigned to somebody when they've done something amazing and heroic because they just did it. There are people who've done heroic things, but 9-11, for example, or after recent shootings where they went in or they protected people, or there's something where they just stopped in, stepped in front. None of them, I believe, decided, I'm going to be a hero and do this. No, they just thought, I'm going to do this. Heroes are not self-described. Heroes are labeled after the fact. So... I believe that's one one reason why I feel I do about that that label is I don't feel I would ever dare claim something like that just to be transparent. Um, my ego couldn't handle it <laughs> to be transparent. Um, anyway, so why I do what I do is because I'm very passionate about women being honored, respected, and appreciated. Period. That's my that's my driver in my in my life, and that I'm not going to go to the backstory about why it comes through. I've talked about it before on the broadcast. But I'm very clear that what I'm very intrigued by how it's sometimes women who attack my work, who don't appreciate my work, which is interesting because I'm not there to challenge them unless they're feeling challenged for no reason. But I'm very much about honoring, respecting women and helping them from a masculine perspective, because that's who I am, to be respected, to be safe, to be comfortable in who they are and help them rebuild, restore, and renew their own self-confidence, self-approval, self-trust, self-appreciation, all these different things. It's what I do and why I do it. So I guess I need to vent it out and I thought I'd do it over this medium because Facebook Live is kind of my, my, vis my, vid I'm looking for, my online platform because one person may watch it or 10 people may watch it or a thousand people, I don't know. That's out of my control. 
but I really get clear it's interesting because the hero label when it's people who claim it for themselves really ties back into the narcissist title at the beginning Sorry, I'm just I'm just doing some math in my head sort of thing <laughs> so because the thing about narcissism as I mentioned earlier is it's a very self-centered act because a narcissist usually comes from a place of um, and it's funny because someone said it's about trauma it's like I'm not sure it is a lot of times a lot of times narcissists are trained that way it is sometimes a chemical imbalance because in the sociopathic which is the other end the next step of the spectrum from narcissist to sociopath that's a chemical imbalance often where the person has missing wiring in their brain we don't even think about compassion they don't have any sense of of feeling or anything else and narcissist is not as far down that path so to speak if there is a path but what they do is they don't know how to fuel themselves to love themselves and the challenge is they don't know they don't want to know how to do it that's one of the biggest challenges so what happens is they take it from other people they will be generous and gracious and loving and amazingly flattering and listen to everything you say until they know everything about you and they can manipulate the hell out of you that's how a narcissist works and their path to doing that is so they can feel better about themselves but it's not through feeling better about themselves it's about feeling better than you and that shift that crime in a way for me is why I feel so deplorable having having friends of mine and clients who have been on the receiving end of a narcissistic behavior or relationship I feel so and yes I do take it personally I feel so upset for them and also so I mean it's angry in a way but it's not angry because I'm not it wasn't directly affecting me but I feel so frustrated with those people doing that to my friends and clients which means I have to do the work on myself to come back to center and say okay that's not my job to worry about that my, my focus is on the people who want to work with me so those clients who come to work with me who have been through that I have great compassion for what they've been through I also have great humility in the work I do because that for me is the only way I can do the work I can which is out of respect and out of admiration for my clients and appreciating them to get where they want to go so the bottom line, bottom line is I ain't no hero <laughs> it's, it's an, it's an interesting label because that one that one that one gave me some pause for thought so um i just wanted to vent that get it out speak about it and say what i'm about so in case you're wondering about my stuff what i talk about i mentioned uh, my coming home to yourself program which i'll put a link in the comments because i've got to market myself and promote my stuff as well there's a page there's a pay what you want guided course starts next weekend that will help you rebuild self-esteem self-support self-appreciation self-love self-care self-respect self-approval and a bunch of other stuff 13 actually no 17 I'm up to 17 different self-reflective things that are being included in the course so I'll put the link in the comments for that if you want some direct one-on-ones coaching I do put a link in the comments I will put a link in the comments so you can find out about my coaching which would be a uh, discovery session you can have with me and I think that's about it I just wanted to vent get it out because it's been bugging me since I saw that post earlier I got triggered I had to edit my response a few times as well to that comment. So um, having said all that, thank you for watching what may have been a somewhat disjointed broadcast. <laughs> I appreciate you watching. appreciate you being with me. Um, this is my daily broadcast on Facebook Live at 5 p.m. Pacific time every day of the week unless something changes because I have months in a while I have to do it, shift in my schedule. If you want to find me live and join me in person, you do it on my personal page on Facebook, which is facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby. And the replays go onto my business page, which is barryselby.author, and also onto my YouTube channel, which you can subscribe to, which is Barry Selby, and the playlist is Messages for the Masculine. If this provoked you in any sort of way, welcome to my welcome to the club. <laughs> if you have any questions or thoughts, please put them below, and I'll respond when I sign off. Again, I'll put a link in the comments for my new course and for a discovery session so you can find out how to reach me. Um, that's about it. I appreciate you watching. I will see you again tomorrow, same time, same channel. I think it'll be the same time tomorrow. I have got an inkling I might be able to go see the go see it as I started with. I may be going to see Endgame tomorrow, so I have to figure out my schedule to see when I have to see it at the movie theater. It's a three hour movie, you've got a plan for that. Um anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you again tomorrow. You take care of yourselves. Bye. <laughs>